Hi, it's Matt. With COVID forcing many of us to meet outside this winter, I've had an idea. Can I make this electric blanket so then it can be powered by a USB battery bank? Before I start, I do not recommend doing this yourself. Electric blankets do not have the best safety record anyway. And yeah, this isn't advice. This is just showing you my process as I try a thing. I came up with this idea a few weeks ago while I was sat in a park with a few of my friends and we left because we were freezing our tits off. And I was thinking what would help the situation would be an electric blanket, but there's no power in a park. And I couldn't find any battery powered electric blanket. So I thought maybe I can make one myself. So what I've got here is a 12 volt electric blanket and it's designed to plug into your car because your car's got a 12 volt battery in it. Now I don't want to lug around a car battery with me. They're way too big and heavy. So let's get rid of that adapter. So we're left with this power socket and I was thinking, well, I could find a battery that can plug into this. And I had a look and they're all designed for caravans. They're all this big and really expensive. And then I remembered the kind of battery that I lug around quite often, these USB-C ones. But Matt, if it's designed for a car, how are you going to make it work with USB-C? Normal old style USB power supplies only output 5 volts. This is a 12 volt blanket, but we have a thing called USB-C power delivery. You'll see so many more things that are powered using USB-C these days. And that's because USB-C power delivery can output multiple different voltages, anything from 5 to I think 25 volts. With normal standard power supplies, you plug it in and you get the power out of it. It's that easy. With USB-C power supplies, there's an extra step where the device plugged into it can talk to it and request a specific voltage. Now this blanket's not designed to do that at all. So I've bought an extra chip, which I intend to build into this so then it can talk to a charger and make it battery powered. Okay, what's the plan? My plan is to see if the blanket works and then see if the chip works and if they both do what I'm expecting them to do, then hopefully I can tie the two together and make it battery powered. So let's see if this blanket works. I've got a power supply here. 12 volts, just what a car battery kicks out. And ooh, I've got a light. There's a light on this temperature controller. I don't want to work on it while it's hot, so I'm going to turn it off. Next, we've got this chip. I've bought a couple of different ones. I need one that can output 12 volts or thereabouts. If it's a bit more, then it doesn't matter so much because car batteries are known to output a little bit more. I'd rather use the little one because it's smaller, easier to fit in. But if I need to use the big one, then that's also fine. So the size difference here is quite noticeable. So let's get rid of the big one and let's try the small one. So if I plug that into the power, I should be able to use my multimeter to see what the voltage is. Okay, that's outputting 20 volts. So the little one's outputting 20 volts and I can see on the back of it, it says 20 or five. There's a solder pad in here, which I can solder together to change. So five is way too low. 20 is a bit high, but it might work. Let's try the other one. This one's got a button so then you can change the voltage that's coming out of it. Okay, so that's kicking out five. If I press the button, do I get anything different? Nine. Fifteen. Twenty. Okay, so this one can do 15, which sounds a bit more appropriate. <laughs> Let's see if I turn it off and on again. Does it come back at the same voltage I left it on? Do I need to press and hold that? I'm just looking up the instructions for this chip so then I can find out the way of setting the voltage on it permanently. And a lot of them are very badly translated Chinese, but I found a post by Alex Whittemore, which I'll link below, which has some English instructions. So for 12 volts, I need it to be green. Okay, so I plug it in while holding the power button. The light flashes many colors and then I press it until it goes green. So if I unplug it, will it turn back on in green? No, it's red. It went green red. It's five. I worked out why it wasn't working. 
I don't think my mains power supply that was using to test can do 12 volts. Yeah, it can't. That's why it wasn't doing it. But now I've managed to set it. I've got the green LED on it and on the multimeter. 12.1 volts. Great, so that's what I want. So I've got a USB-C trigger board, which can convert my battery into the 12 volts that this blanket wants. So now I need to connect this to the blanket. Let's tidy up a little first. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so the two cables for this come out of a little plastic supported piece here, then I can feel them go in and then attach to the heater wire that's going throughout the blanket. So I don't think I want to take this apart because I don't want to get close to any of the heating elements and stuff. So I'm going to butcher the end of this DC connector and then try to attach the USB trigger board to here and then use a piece of heat shrink tubing to insulate it all. Yeah, so I need to start by chopping up this cable. I'm going to need a bit of slack on the end of this because I need to work out which one the positive and negative is. Oh, luckily they are coloured blue and brown inside, which are standard colours for neutral and live. But before I solder anything on, I'm going to try and kind of touch it together to see if this turns on with the battery power. So I've stripped my cables. We've got a blue one and a brown one. Brown one is traditionally live or positive and blue is traditionally neutral. Because I don't trust this, I'm going to test that theory. <laughs> but opening up the bit I've got left, plugging it into some power and then seeing which way around they are. If I put the positive one in the brown and the negative one on the blue, I should get 12 volts. If they're the wrong way around, it should say minus. That's plus 12. Yes, cool. So that means brown is positive. If I plug this in and touch these on here carefully, come over here. We should expect to see the power come on. So we've got blue on the minus, plus on the brown. Yay, it turned on straight away. Yes. Good. That means we're onto something. Well, the next step's just to solder it up, I think. We've proven the different parts. Great. This soldering iron's new. I haven't used it yet. It arrived today. But thanks to all of you who bought a Matt Gray t-shirt or tote bag on the Matt Gray shop, I used that money to buy this soldering iron. I need to rearrange some stuff here because I need the soldering iron on my right because I am right-handed. I have prepared my cables. Let's see if I can shove them in. Will they fit? Yes, I think they will fit. Right, let's tin the ends, which means putting a bit of solder on the end of each of them. Let's chop the ends down a little bit. I'll do it with a point on the end to make it slightly easier to shove through. Let's see if it fits. Okay, I can get each in. Can I get them both in at the same time? In we go, in we go. There we go. Great. One of the hardest things while soldering is trying to get your piece to stay the right way up and not move while you're using it. It would be easier if I had a device on me or there's a device called Helping Hands which some people use. I, I don't find them very useful. Okay, that's the negative in. Great. Let's chop the ends off. Let's 
Let's see if it works. Hopefully I should just be able to plug it into this USB battery and it turn on. Here we go. Hey, it turns on immediately. Right, there's one additional thing I want to do. I'm going to try to remove this tiny little button so then I don't accidentally set the voltage to something other than 12 and make this not work. It's got some solder joints here and here on either side of it. It's right next to two surface mount components that I really don't want to take off because they'll be an arse to put back on. I think it's doable. And if I break this now, at least I've got a spare. Ooh. Well, I've broken the button. That'll stop it going. Maybe let's do that instead. Great, so I've successfully soldered the board onto the end of the cable and I have removed the button that you use to set the voltage because I want the voltage to remain. So the next step is to put it in a piece of heat shrink tubing to give it some protection. And I need to get my heat gun to heat it up. I got tools, they're multiplying. <laughs> heat shrink tubing is a type of plastic sheath that shrinks when you apply heat to it. So I've got a heat gun here. Doesn't need to be too hot. And you should see this start to shrink as I warm it up gently. Okay. Off you go. Okay, that's it. I think I've done it. Let's try it. So I've got my USB battery bank. Turn it on. Plug it into the power on here. And we've got a power light. I've pressed the heat button and it says it's heating up. Now we'll wait, I suppose. The instructions did say three to five minutes, so. Three to five minutes will have passed. Now. <laughs> says it's doing it. Oh, there's heat in here. Oh, I can feel some warmth. Yeah. That means I've done it. I've got a battery powered electric blanket. Bloody brilliant. Yeah, it seems to be working. Hopefully it won't set me on fire or anything like that, but at least when I'm gonna be using it, I'll be outside and with someone who can help me. I would not recommend doing this yourself just because well, I don't know how safe it is. I've got enough knowledge to try it, but not enough to, I don't know, approve it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm at Matt Gray S on all the socials, so Twitter, Instagram with a little bit of TikTok at the moment. If you go to shop.mattg.co.uk, you can get yourself a Matt Gray t-shirt or tote bag and hit subscribe so you don't miss my next video. Thank you. Oh, it's too hot. Oh.